I'm going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Velar Shannon Courtney joins me. Thank you for giving me some of your time. Um, yeah, how are we? I'm really well, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. All the better for seeing yourself. I haven't seen you in a long while. Um, the boxing world, in terms of a fight week, hasn't seen you for quite a while. Uh, does it feel a bit strange in that sense? Because I suppose you've gone from being really active to having the biggest break of your career, and now you're back in the, in the spotlight again. Yeah, you know, it's... It's been a year out and it's not been a fun year. It's not been a year out of choice. You know, obviously I had the injury, had to have two operations in the end, was actually told before the second operation there's a chance you will never box again. So that wasn't fun, obviously. But I mean, I was, I was supposed to fight on the Eubank Ben card, which never happened. So it's been a bit of an up and down year. But we're finally here. I'm finally fighting again. I'm buzzing to be back. Obviously not something you probably want to dwell on too much, but... When you're told there's a possibility you may never box again, how is that mentally to deal with when you've gone through so much to get yourself into the position you are, to being told that there's a potential that you will never step in the ring again? How was that to deal with mentally, that kind of period? It was hard because we had the first operation, which we believed was, was a success. And then I was training, I was working really hard, but I couldn't, I was in pain still and I wasn't telling my team. And then it got to the point that I couldn't straighten my leg. And the surgeons and the physios were like, why can't she get full extension? It doesn't make sense. And they were trying to force my legs straight and they couldn't. And in the end, I couldn't even walk. We had another scan. They were like, oh, God, there's another problem. So I had to have another surgery to get it removed. And thank the Lord, the second surgery was such a success that I literally walked out of the hospital with a straight leg. So then I had to do all the rehab, start all over again, build my leg up again. So it's been a long process, but at the time it was mentally draining because... You're telling everyone, you know, I'm fine, I'm fine. But actually, you don't even know if you're ever going to box again. So it was really hard to deal with. But I feel like I coped well. And yeah, thanks be to God that I'm back. Well, I remember we spoke when they done a Taylor Serrano kind of launch press conference in London. And you were talking about how nice it felt just to be able to run again. I can't imagine someone who's tactically trying to work on boxing related things in the gym and is so active training multiple times a day. How annoying it is just being able to do a very basic thing like jog like something your standard person can do and not work on the stuff that you want to work on yeah, yeah. It, it got like I said it got to when I couldn't walk um couldn't sleep at night because the pain was waking me up just it was just got out of hand but you know what the weird thing was the one thing where at the time where my leg didn't hurt was when I was boxing because I had a bent leg at all times when my leg was bent it didn't hurt but where there was um a lesion growing in the capsule it was and it was getting bigger and bigger by the day. It was getting harder to straighten the leg. And then in the end, I had a, like a, a degree like bend in my leg at all times. And if unless I was sitting down or boxing stance with like a bent leg, so I was really low, I was in agony. It's hard to explain, but it was a, even the surgeon was like, we've never seen one like this before. It was very bizarre. Have yeah. you had to alter your training and boxing? Obviously, I know you said you walked out of there and it kind of all feels brand new perhaps, but have you had to alter even a little bit of your style, any of your training for this camp? Um, we've changed my style, to be honest, to, to something that I'm a lot more comfortable with, something that I actually enjoy. I now have a greater understanding of my body, my style, and the way I want to fight. So we've changed that. But the only thing I can't, I can't do box jumps still. My surgeon was like, just for this camp, please don't do box jumps. Um, so we've changed other things. It's weird. My right leg that had the operations on is now stronger than my left leg. Well, I've worked so much on that leg, so... But, yeah, I feel, like, genuinely, in, in general, I feel stronger and better than ever. And, obviously, this fight this weekend isn't championship weight because it doesn't need to be because it's my first fight back after such a long time out. So, as it stands now, I'm on weight. I don't need to worry about any of that. So, it's nice. I can just enjoy fight week and feel strong. I'm in a good, I'm in good condition, so it's nice. Yeah. If it's something you're willing to talk to us about, can you just kind of tell us how it was facing criticism post Liverpool because every fighter faces criticism you could spell a tweet wrong and people would tell you that you ain't got a brain cell so there's criticism coming from all angles at all time when you're in the public eye obviously you are in the public eye especially in boxing to a very big degree um, just kind of facing that criticism after Liverpool as well how was that for you so I switched off my social media because I knew I was going to get heavily criticised 
for obviously losing the belt on the scales for the way that I performed. But I could have come out that night and put out a statement saying, I just boxed 10 rounds for a world title, have a ruptured ACL and a torn meniscus, but I never said it, I just didn't say anything. And I thought, I'm not going to come out and tell everyone that I've got a severe injury, which no one would ever box with a ruptured ACL, it's unheard of, but I did it, in the understanding that I had a rematch clause. So I knew I would get slated if I come out with an excuse, so I just went silent. Just took time away for myself, for mental health reasons as well. I took time away because I was struggling before the fight mentally very badly. And then I ended up obviously not long after the fight doing Celebrity SAS when my phone got taken off me anyway, which is a blessing in disguise. So I kind of just zoned out of me anyway. And then going on there allowed me to rebuild myself mentally, get rid of a lot of demons. And I come out and I was stronger than ever. So I was like mentally, I was ready to face whatever critics did come my way. Yeah, see, I'm a fan of Celebrity SAS and I like the civilian one as well. And I do always think watching it, you know, like you kind of get the sceptics of, is it as hard as it looks? Do they give the celebrities a nice, easy run? Have you got a packet of crisps at lunch and then you've got a roast dinner at night or whatever? It's not like that then, is it? Literally, if you think they finish filming, they go, right, everyone out of the tent, <laughs> McDonald's is on its way. It's not like that, I promise quick, you. Quick run to the showers. <laughs> it was, do you know what, I'm not just saying it, it's harder than what they show on TV because you've got to think they condense a month into 60 minutes, like eight episodes, that's it. It was brutal. It's roasting and hot in the day because we're in the desert, but the desert is freezing cold at night. We were sleeping in wet clothes with minimal sleep anyway. The whole thing was so hard, but I went through a massive transformation during that show mentally. Um, got rid of... I don't know, did, did you watch the series? Yeah. So you know, like when they pull me in for the in, like the mirror room, they yeah. interview. So they don't actually. They didn't show. They didn't show a lot of my interview for legal reasons because they couldn't legally sh say stuff that had happened to me. But I told them things that that I've been holding in demons. I've been holding in and things that happened to me as a child. So that I've been holding in for twenty years that I've refused to speak to anyone about, speak to counsel about, and I just come out and I said it. And even the DS, who were notorious hard men from the SAS, were just like gobsmacked, a bit emotional to hear what I'd actually been through and never told nobody. And when you actually get that stuff off your chest, it was like, oh, I literally felt like I dropped a bag of weights off my shoulders. And then it allowed me to just think, do you know what, I've gone through that, I've dealt with it, I've said what I had to get off my chest... Now I can actually kind of, it sounds so like, what's the word, like cliche, but start my life again. And that's what doing that show allowed me to do. I was allowed to start my life again, get all get my demons off my chest. And the, my whole, like, since I've been a pro, I've been living a lie. I've been trying to be cocky and arrogant so I come across confident on camera. And it's not me. I'm not that person, but I was trying to cover it up because I was so unhappy, so suicidal, so depressed. And now I can just be myself again for the first time in many, many years. I'm smiling all the time now because I've dealt with them demons and I'm, I'm happy again. Obviously, we know boxing's a hard sport. You can see that from the outside. Um, when you're kind of wrapped in such a boxing bubble and you have things perhaps that you've held to yourself like you mentioned, would it have always taken something where boxing is not involved? And obviously boxing's mentioned on the show and, you know, because that is who you are, you are a boxer. But was it always going to take something that wasn't boxing to perhaps get yourself back on track? It wouldn't have been training for a fight, it wouldn't have been camp, it wouldn't have been getting the belt back, a unification. It would have been something that wasn't boxing yeah. to get you to where you are now, do you think? Yeah, because in boxing, it's like you're not allowed to show any form of weakness. And then the minute you do, or the minute you slip up, or the minute you do something that's not 100%, like the public, they hound you, and it's... It's hard, so I could never come out and show that I had this weakness or that I was in a bad way because, unfortunately, when you're put in the public eye, everyone's got an opinion of you, but you're not allowed to be human, it seems. It's like you're not allowed to be a human being and have emotions or feelings or have a past or make mistakes. So, yeah, I, I think it took me to get out of boxing, do something, be it a TV show. That's probably saved my life, to be honest. Well, look, we're here now. It's kind of all gone, I'll say kind of full circle, we're back and you're ready to do what, what you do best. Um, 
and you're not doing it jumping in with, I mean, I know kind of in the female scene, there's not the biggest pool of talent yeah. when you compare it to the men's scene, but it would have been easy for you to come back in and jump in with a nice, I'd say easy fight, someone you can kind of coast past, show your skills again, but you're coming back against someone who has made a name for herself as in being tough. Yes. Just showing that you don't want to jump back in and just take things easy. No, listen, this this sport is tough as it is, but I don't want to come in and just take it easy and then everyone be like, oh, it's a routine victory. Do you know Would you get motivated for that if it was something easy? Or are you someone who needs something tough to get motivated? I like you, I suppose, were motivated for the SAS because it was difficult. Yeah, I'm someone who definitely needs something tough to motivate me. But in the same fa- same way, I think I would have been motivated for anyone because I've had a year out. I've missed this sport so much that I'm just buzzing to fight again and be back home. And you know, like Darren Barker said in an interview yesterday, it would be so easy for me to just carry on doing the celebrity stuff now. And to be honest, it's a lot easier. It pays a lot better than women's boxing, I can assure you. You don't get punched in the face to do it. And there's no stress involved. But there's no fun in it either. I love boxing. It's my passion. It's my it's my why. It just keeps me going. It keeps me ticking over. So I, I need boxing. Has it changed kind of your outlook on what you want to achieve in the sport I know you've always been kind of very straightforward in what you want to achieve uh, you want world titles you want unifications everything as big as possible but has it perhaps given you this time out and the things you've had to go through perhaps given you another perspective of other things you want to achieve through boxing yeah happiness because I put so much pressure on myself and I never used to enjoy the moment or soak it all in and we're such a a lucky bunch to do what we do for a living on camera and you know, it's we're blessed, so I need to take actually enjoy it. But do you know, the whole process I've learned a lot about myself. For example, I said, and this is probably going to be frowned upon me saying this, but there's always been this like mindset with everyone. Like with me, I've always had this mindset that you have to be in the gym 24 7. If you know, if you're not fighting, you've got to be in the gym. And I've now come to realize that an overworked me is a car crash waiting to happen. I go into self sabotage mode when I'm overworked. So I've now realised that I, when the fight's over, I do need to take a, a bit of time out and, and go have a... Like, you know, you get them fighters that they go on a holiday afterwards, every fight, and they come back and they feel refreshed. I never used to do that. I'm doing that now. And I've... Like, after the Eubank-Ben fight fell fell through, normally I'd go back and I'd be like, back in the gym Monday morning and I was, and I'd work myself down to the bone where I'd be just, like, dead constantly. Took time away, you know, went away with my boyfriend, had a really nice time, was still training out there come back and my team were like wow you come back fitter sharper fresher so I now know that you know then couple of weeks where you can actually again be a human being I've now realised how important they are and to stop putting so much pressure on myself picking this back up with Shannon Courtney quick battery change um, yeah you mentioned the Eubank Ben week and how hard is that when you think things are going to get put back, back on track and then something that is completely out of your control i mean i suppose injuries and whatnot are out of your control in a sense but this is something that nobody has any control over to then get that crushed i mean it just seems like it just seemed like thing after thing like that must have been another one that's just like a big kick in the <laughs> you went to say kick in the balls yes, didn't yes, you yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um i can't confirm i don't have any <laughs> um so yeah, it was difficult. Do you know what was more difficult was the fact that we didn't know what was going on. One minute we were being told, you are fighting. Then it was, you're not fighting. Then it was, go and do the media workout because the show's going ahead, which was so bizarre. Then it was, um, the headlines cancelled, but the undercard's going to go ahead. And then it was just, we know where we, where we stood and you're going to bed at night time thinking, do I, like... Do I continue to make weight or not? Like it was just hard, and I felt very sorry for someone like Phoenix Cash. He'd already had one fight fall through. Who was, you know, trying to make weight because he had a championship weight to make. And I was just watching people thinking, "Oh, this is horrendous." And we wasn't being told so to have like your big comeback fight that I was buzzing for. People, I had people that booked flights from abroad to come and watch me, booked hotels. It was hard, but. And I threw my toys out the prow and I, would, uh, I moaned a lot. But when you sit back and you stop being selfish and you think about it, someone could have got hurt that night and the right decision was obviously made for the fight not to go ahead. And if someone had got hurt, obviously you've got to think of the fighters first, but secondly, because of the circumstance of the whole drug scandal, boxing would have been in tatters because of it. 
So when you take yourself out of the scenario and stop being selfish for a minute, you, you realise, you know what, yeah, the right decision was made. Yeah. Well, I suppose there will be an understanding from everyone as to why you had that little kind of throw your toys out the pram mm. scenario. Because even if it was 15 minutes or a few hours, like I said, it's just I can't imagine how after everything you've been through and how much you wanted that. Like, I think you'd be forgiven for having your little yeah. sassy moment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think... You know, you, it's there's a lot. That work, you have have a box for years. So you've been paid for years, so that was frustrating for me because you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna get paid a da da da. But yeah, like I said, it's just sometimes a delay in your plans is God God's protection. So it was obviously meant to happen for a reason. Well, look, like I said, it all kicks off again uh, this Saturday. Kind of, I say new beginnings. I suppose you probably feel like that as well. Feel better mentally and physically um yeah. and everyone keeps saying like Sh- shannon's so different and i am i'm even my own mum says it i'm like a different person now i'm, I'm happy i'm always smiling um, yeah, when people say like this is v2 version two, does this feel like version two of shannon, yourself but like a proper one shannon 2.0 <laughs> yeah it does i think you're going to see a very different me in the ring if i'm a very different person out of the ring as well because I'm always smiling nowadays. People think I've had veneers and I haven't. <laughs> I just never used to smile much. <laughs> but no, I'm just, yeah, it's like, I feel like um, the journey's starting again for me and it's very exciting. And you know what I'm going to have to talk about? Obviously, this interview is about you. This weekend for yourself is about you. Um, but there's always fights down the line that bring interest from fans and, of course, from us. Um, because we kind of get the on-camera stuff if it is to happen. Um, Ebony Bridges show? is having a world title fight. You win, she wins, head to head, blah, blah. You know how it works. Promoter's dream as well, yeah. Oh, I think Eddie tried to stir the pot a little bit earlier and I wasn't giving him nothing. <laughs> yeah, listen, obviously, we we boxed. I beat her. I won a world title. And, you know, at the time when she wanted the rematch, I was an arrogant, cocky twat and was like, what's she got to offer me? How the tables are turned and now she's got a world title I don't so she could be like why would I give her another fight what's she got to offer me so that's a bit of a humble pie for me <laughs> but you know yeah do I want to have the, world, the rematch with her if it makes sense of course I do it was a massive fight um, all that, that time ago and I think it'll even be even bigger now ideal ideal scenario is I um, I get my, my WBA world title back she keeps her world title and we have a big unification in the summer and a big payday. Well, yeah, Nina's just won. The belt obviously was previously yours off um, Jamie Mitchell. I know that's a fight kind of with less verbal spice, um, but that's a fight now Nina's kind of put herself on the map that, again, people would be interested in. And I think all British fights, regardless of whether there's a bit of back and forth or not, just do bring a lot more interest, I suppose. Yeah, like I, I said to everyone like, that Nina would beat Jamie. Not many people believe me. Um... I'll be honest, I wanted Jamie to win because I, when I get my world title back, I wanted to beat the girl that beats me. Yeah. But, fair play. Listen, I know Nina. She's a nice girl. She's a mother. And it's nice when nice things happen to nice people. I don't want to be too nice because I'm going to end up fighting her, but well done to her. And I haven't seen the fight because I couldn't seem to get it anywhere because it was a board, wasn't it? But I heard it, heard it was a good fight. And, God willing, I get through Saturday. I think that's a big fight down the line for me. Yeah. There we go. Everything um, could come together. Really looking forward to seeing you back in the ring this Saturday. Thank you for giving me some of your time as always. And um, have you got kind of one final message, Shannon 2.0? <laughs> That's the new name now. I just want to say thank you to everyone that has supported me, especially throughout the year. You know, when you're when you're world champion and you're winning, everyone loves you, don't they? And then when you lose it, you see who your true friends are. So just one more, is that the typical boxing story? Because I've heard a lot of people say, you're 200 DMs when you win, saying, oh, you're the best thing since sliced bread. You lose, and the missed calls when you come out the change room are your family and your couple of best mates. You notice, yeah, you notice who is there for you. Like, I've got my girls, and do you know what? I think with people like that, it's, it's quality over quantity now, and I've realised that. And I was moving around with the wrong people at the time, you know, because especially when... You, your name gets a bit bigger and you think it's cool to be around certain bigger names and stuff. And you take a step back and you're like, what was I doing there? That's not even the real world. Like, I've got my girls, I've got my family. Even like, for example, Fight Week, I'm going to be honest with you, everyone goes to my archive. Not, not even Fight Week, the last, I'd say the last four weeks, everyone's gone into my archives, on my like my WhatsApp, for example, other than 
my my family, my my team, my girls and my boyfriend, everyone's put to one side. I don't need to... Uh, you're, Oscar, you're not archived. I can promise you that. <laughs> but I just want to keep myself to myself. I know, I know who I want around me nowadays. And when you've got too many people around you, it's almost like when you entertain the circus for too long, you become the clown. I don't want to be that. I want to just keep myself to myself. You know, you become a product of your environment. Good people around me with the right, the right head on their shoulders, and I'm, I'll be good. I'm gonna share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light. Yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see, if someone grabbed up my wife, I'm saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from it, and this has been like a therapy session.